Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and this week's episode is all about how I'm using AI to make my art business more efficient. And I feel like everybody's talking about AI, and I even feel a little bit late to the conversation. But I want to just explain how it's really helping me to save time. And that's the whole theme of my whole year, right? Is save time, make more money, work a little bit less and enjoy life a little bit more. So how I'm using it, I'm using it to generate pitch scripts, create reference photos and different variations of mock-ups for murals. And I'm using it to edit and caption videos. So let's just talk about, is AI a good option for you to start looking into for your own business? So I'll just explain everything that I just said. Okay, so first off, let's address the controversial topic amongst artists lately that I'm seeing in a lot of Facebook groups and just by talking to artists, wondering if using AI is a form of cheating. And to that question, if you're asking yourself that question or you have a stance one way or not, I just also want to ask you, is using a projector cheating? Some artists think so. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with AI? Where's the line? Because I will say, when I first started using a projector way back in the day, so 10 years ago, I started, I did my first logo and I was like, how the heck am I going to get this image on this piece of paper that my customer wants on his wall? How am I going to get that up there? And somebody recommended a projector. So I asked around, I borrowed one from a friend and went there at night and projected it up on the wall. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank gosh, this is making my life so much easier. Not once did I think, oh, this is cheating. (laughs) So fast forward a little bit, I start getting more logo jobs and I eventually buy a projector of my own. It was, I remember it was $400 and it was a lot of money for me back then, especially because I had maybe, I mean, I hadn't made that much in art in the beginning, but I was like, oh no, this thing is going to help me save so much time. I need a projector (laughs) because I don't want to grid it out. Like I learned how to do in drawing class and like, so anyway, I did that. And so that's just how I did things. And then after a while, I don't know if you know the story or not, but I don't want to explain the whole thing, but I ended up landing a job with Bass Pro Shops and they flew me to the first location, which was in Tennessee. And I went there and I brought my projector and I told them, I was like, okay, so they wanted me to paint their logo on a wall. I was like, great. I've done that before many times. That's why I'm here. They're like, okay, where can I set up my projector? And they looked at me like, you use a projector. The guy who did this before you didn't. And I was like, well, this is just how I do it. Like, and I just felt the tension, not only from the people who I was telling, asking how I can get the projector up there, because back then, whenever I set the projector on the ground and pointed it up, it didn't have that auto level feature like we have now. (laughs) And so I don't take that for granted. So I had to figure out a way I had to get my projector really high on one lift and project it across the room. And I was on another lift and other artists on the job saw that and they weren't using a projector. This was new technology. So they weren't really, I want to say I lost a few respect points from them, but I was like, no, this, I don't care what you think. This is obviously helping me do my job much better and faster. And everything on that job site was how quickly can you do this? And so I just continued doing it. I said, heck with it. And eventually Bass Pro imagery team, the company ended up buying projectors for the artists there to use. So they didn't have to buy their own because they saw how much faster it helped them do their job. So at first people were very skeptical and then it just became the way of doing things. And that really reminds me of what's happening right now. I think it's this new technology. Some people are using it wrong. Some people like, if you don't learn how to draw before you use a projector, that might be toe in the line. (laughs) You have to learn how to draw before you learn how to paint and a projector just kind of helps speed it up in between. So learn how to draw (laughs) because learning how to draw just helps you paint better anyway. So don't skip that. But like with AI, I'm using the skills that I have to help me do a bunch of things. So I'm I'm just going to go into it more. But also I want to ask you another question. Is hiring someone to help paint half of my mural for me cheating? Because my name is the only one on the wall. Is that cheating? (laughs) Is, 
is since I didn't paint the whole thing, just like, you know, I'm not coming up with every pitch script that ChatGPT is helping me with. I'm not coming up with every reference photo or I'm, I'm not coming up with every single part of the mock-up. AI is helping me with that. Other artists are helping me paint and I'm instructing them to do it, but I'm taking the majority of the credit. <laughs> is that cheating? No, it's not. I'm just using my resources. And really that's how they used to do it back in the old days. I mean, I'm sure you know this, that like Michelangelo didn't paint every single bit of every single thing. He had understudies and other people who did that, who matched his style. And that's what I'm doing now. Also, is it cheating that I go online and I get a reference photo, say it's royalty free. Obviously I'm not stealing photos. We're not talking about that, but I'm copying someone else's creation. Someone else took that photo and I'm using it to paint. I didn't take that photo. Why? Because I'm lazy, probably. <laughs> I don't want to go out and take all my photos. There are some artists, mostly the really, really high-end ones, that they take their own reference photos because they do see that that gray area is not a line that they want to cross. Personally, I'm about making money and living my life and trying to make the most I can in the shortest amount of time. Again, hence the theme of the year. So I don't want to go out and take my reference photos. I will gladly either pay a ro small royalty fee for something online or lately I'm help having AI to help me generate a reference photo. And it's the same thing. <laughs> you know, I'm not having AI paint it for me. I don't think we're in jeopardy of that at all. I saw somebody tagged me recently that um, they have machines that can now paint murals, but <laughs> I bet the machine is very expensive and there's no way a machine can paint on brick. Like the majority of the murals that I do are on uneven surfaces. It is a treat that I am indoors painting on a flat wall because that hardly ever happens. It's usually outside or on stucco or whatever. So I just, I feel like I'm the only one who can do that. You're the only one who can paint on that in your own specific way. And I don't think our jobs are in jeopardy at all. So I am fully embracing AI and everything that's coming with it because it helps us save time. Now, where's the line here? So I have had a conversation with an artist recently who was thinking that, and I won't name what who it is, but thinking that a different artist was helping him generate art and he was signing his name to it and selling it that way. So he wasn't actually painting it. He was having AI generate the art for him that's very close to his style and selling it that way. Personally, you can make up your own mind, but I molded over. I was like, wait, what if I have AI create most of the painting and then I just, you know, put touch-ups on it and I, then I do, okay, that's a little, that's stretching it. <laughs> I can't confidently say that I'm creating the majority of it in that way if AI is doing the painting for me or the creation and I'm just doing a little bit. That's a bit much. But if it's helping me to get a better reference photo or send a better pitch with better language, you know, like chat GPT does. Like, I think that's completely fine. So I think it's just, where do you draw your line in the sand? Like where, where, what is cheating and what's not? But think about the projector thing because it's very similar to me. Anyway, let's start with chat GPT. I mean, I think that's the most common one that people are using. And we've heard all the things about college kids cheating on their English tests and or essays and whatnot. And I actually have a friend who is an English professor who confirms this. She has had cases of plagiarism because ChatGPT, they're typing a prompt in and they're just copying, pasting what they say. But that doesn't really have anything to do with us. So as long as you're not plagiarizing, I think it's completely fine to help think up ideas. So I've used ChatGPT recently, and I'll have links for all of these in the notes here. But I've used it recently to help me create pitches to send out to schools. So at the beginning of the year, I painted for a local university and a couple of schools, and I just had a really good experience doing it. And I was like, you know, maybe I want to pitch to different schools to paint for them. I like the logos and just, I like the kids and all the things. So it's like, this is something I'm gonna do. I like teaching. So I use chat GPT to help me create a script. And if anybody that's practiced with that so far, you know that you put something in, you ask. So I think I asked it something like, create a mural pitch for a local school to have a mural painted on their walls. And it had some great things that came up. There was one in here. Okay, so I'm actually looking at the thing that it spit out right now. So it spit out this suggestion of this very long email. 
And it's very wordy, but I know from my pitching experience that the first email needs to be very short. So I, first I was doubting chat GBT. I was like, oh no, no, this is your way. This is way too much. If I send this novel to somebody in the form of an email, they're probably not going to read the whole thing. There's plenty of good information in it. And one was, it was, it had a, why this matters section. So they were pitching in the pitch, it says, why does this matter to the school? Why should they hire me? And this one part says branding and identity. And to quote it, it says, the mural can be tailored to reflect your, uh, oh, this one's about a restaurant. And so this, your restaurant's identity, values, and the story you wanted to tell. It will serve as a unique representation to your brand, leaving a lasting impression on every visitor. So uh, first off, I think that last bit of lasting impression on every visitor is kind of shooting for the moon. I would edit it to say something slightly different, but I loved how it said this and tailored to reflect your restaurant's identity, or you can change it out to say school or whatnot. But I was just playing around with it. I was like, I wonder what it would say if I put in a restaurant. I wonder what it would say if I put in a school. So being very specific in chat GBT is definitely helps, but tailored to reflect your restaurant's identity values and the story you want to tell. That's so great. I'm like, okay, I'm going to use a part of that and put it in my script. So I did. So that's on chat GBT. I think it can help us just with wording and figuring things out how to approach because like a lot of us, like me, like it's hard to start with a blank slate. And I think using prompts like this helps us get started, helps us getting our pitch started and just the different points to make. So it helps just not to start from a blank page. It gives us some words and some suggestions. And I think that's how the best way for AI to be used right now in this way. Another way is a very new thing that I'm trying. So I'm not going to talk about it like I know everything about it because it's this, again, this is very, very new, but I've started using it to come up with reference photos and helping me to create mock-ups. So when I was first introduced to this, I did a live with Gary Gomez. He is in the Artist Academy and he's in there to help give advice because he is a very seasoned artist and I respect his opinion on a lot of things, especially like pricing and all things. So invited him in there. Hey, can you help give students your perspective? Because I think it's really great for them to not hear just my side of everything. So I saw that he was using AI to help generate mock-ups and so I just went straight to him. I was like, either I can either go and try to fumble around with this thing and figure it out myself, or I can go to somebody who's been using it and has already been through some trial runs and just ask him to show me how to do it. So that's what I did. And we did a live in the Artist Academy. So he walked me through how to use this app called Photo Leap. Again, there are links in the description of ChatGBT and all the things. So he was using Photo Leap which is an app on your phone, which is my favorite way to do anything is just to play on my phone and try it. And so I downloaded it and he walked me through it. And I actually already had this pasted together mock-up. And so I put that into Photo Leap to try to get a different style. So I had a customer who wanted a very vintage style of mural. And I was having a hard time coming up with that. The way I mocked it up, I was just having a hard time making it look vintage. And cause I was pasting, you know, photos online and putting them together with trees and all the things. And I, so I, I sent it to him and I told him, I was like, this is what it looks like new. So I'll just have to paint it like to look vintage or I'll paint it new. And then I'll go over it with like a umber wash and we can make it look vintage afterwards. But they were having a really hard time seeing the vintage look with it. So I put it into Photo Leap, the mock-up that I had already done. And I clicked this button that said vintage antique something, or I prompted it to do it. Now I can't remember exactly, but it spit out a vintage style version of my mock-up. And it was very different. Like I had a truck in there and it made the truck look more old and just made everything look older and more antique. So I played around with it more and you can make things look like Candyland in there. You can make things look animated. You can think it, make it look more painted. You can make it look winter. It's just, you click a button in this photo leap app and it makes things look a different style. So it, it makes one photo look just a different way. That's the best I can explain it. You're just going to have to download the app and just play with it. They have a free trial. Try it out. I, th I think you'll like it. And 
I sent them the vintage one and they loved it. I'm like, okay, but this was totally going against what you told me before. Cause I told them, no, we shouldn't do white. We should do off white. And they're like, no, we like the white. And then it just spits out this vintage off white thing overall looks great. And they're like, yeah, let's go with it. I'm like, okay, great. I've also used this app to, I'll put things in and make things look more animated. So less realistic, more painted. And then I'll have the ultra realism look. And with just a click of a button, I can make things look in a different style and I can send those different styles to the customers and show them if you want the ultra realism look that it looks like it's going to pop out at you and looks like it's glowing and it looks magnificent, it's going to cost so much amount. So like 20 grand. But if you want this more painted style, that still looks really good and it'll be 12 grand. And if you want the more animated version, looks like a cartoon, there's not a lot of shading. It just takes me less time that's like seven grand, something like that. So I can really literally show them from a click of a button, different variations, which goes back to my number one pricing strategy of giving them different options. And AI is helping me to help them visualize those different options. Because before I would just tell them, Hey, it's going to look realistic or it's going to look cartoon. Which one do you want? But it was take me so much time to create those mock-ups and different versions to show them they would just trust me. And luckily a lot of customers did trust me and they could kind of visualize it themselves, kind of, but this customer could not at all. So in that case, it helps them visualize all the different options and different price points. And it helps me win over the job. Yeah, it just, they, so they said they wanted the middle version of not quite photorealistic, but not cartoon. They wanted the middle one and they could clearly see that. And it gives me a better reference photo in order to go off of instead of, you know, seeing something and changing in a different way, especially when I have someone helping me. So when it's just me, I can kind of make things up. But when I have someone helping me, it's being able to show them this is exactly what I want. Help me paint this, paint this color here, do it just like this. It helps so much. So yeah. And so we're using Photo Leap. Love it. Highly recommended. I think it's great for beginners to show different variations of things. I did the prompt there's one section of the prompt in there where I told it to describe things. So going in with a blank slate, I told it to describe something like a tree scene with all four seasons with a road and blah, blah, blah. And the stuff that it was spitting out was okay. I was like, oh, it's okay. Like it just, I changed around my descriptor words and all the things and it was okay. So I then messaged my friend Gareth Hood, who's also in the Artist Academy, who is always the one who's up on the technology. So I went to him and I said, hey, you're using this app called Mid Journey, link in the description. And you've been telling me about it for a while. And I've been like, yeah, 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 I'm super busy. I'll, I'll get to it eventually. Now I'm ready. Can you show me? And so we, we did a live inside of the Artist Academy, same thing that we did with Gary and just walked him through how to use this, this Mid Journey thing. So it's a different version. A long story short, I'm not going to go into the how to use it because it's a bit more, slightly more advanced setting it up, kind of. I mean, you could totally do it, but anyway. So I typed in prompts into Mid Journey. So same thing. It's an AI tool used through Discord. And the prompts that it came out with were way better than Photo Leap. The things that it was spitting out were closer to images that I would want to use, although it doesn't have that. So I can't upload something into mid journey and have it change the style of it like I can in photo leap. So that, you know, I can't show a customer three different versions really that I figured out so far anyway, that it might be possible, but I, right now I don't think so. Anyway, it's so much easier in photo leap that I would type things into mid journey and it would come out with these just magical looking things, magical looking murals. And then I would take that and that image and I would go into photo leap and have it do different variations of it. And then I would like every mock-up that I've done so far, there hasn't been even one that I've just taken out and showed the customer like, oh yeah, this is perfect. I've always had to bring it into my iPad on Procreate and adjust it somehow. So just like I use ChatGPT to help create pitch scripts, I then adjust that pitch script to fit my own business. Same thing with MidJourney and PhotoLeap using the AI generator to produce reference photos. I've had to edit them in some way to get it perfect. So I think this is a great tool to add in to the skills that I already have in Procreate and just being able to adjust things. And it's just, it's just making my life a lot easier. It's helping my imagination grow. The prompts in 
mid journey, I type it in and I'm trying to create a mural and the ideas that it's giving me are better than the ideas that I'm thinking of in my own head. And sometimes the photos look better in some ways. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, I didn't really think about adding butterflies to that natural scene, but you know, it naturally did it. There's positives and negatives to it all. But I think if you just have an open mind, try it out, you know, don't have it paint for you or create something for you, but have it help you, I think is a great way. Also, I'm using the last one is I'm using this AI editing tool called Clip Opus Pro. Again, link in the description, but I have these really long podcast episodes and I'm using it to automatically edit for me and edit down the big, long podcast episodes into short little clips, put captions on them. That way I can share them on social media. Again, I don't think that that you can't really use that unless you have a podcast, but if you do, there you go, use it. And But I was having a virtual assistant do that for me before I found this and they would edit it and it was okay. Like, But the AI, how the AI is editing this video, it's so much cheaper and it's faster and it gives me way more options. So it's better. It's saving me money. It's saving my virtual assistant time, which is saving me money. And it's giving me more options. It gives me more clips. Some of the clips aren't very good, <laughs> but some of them are. And so, yeah, it's just, I'm a big fan of it. So I, I'm sure that out there is AI video editor, or if it's not out there already, is coming to help you edit your videos. Because I've talked to several artists about how we just want to create, we don't want to film, and especially we don't want to spend time editing. AI can help you edit. AI can help take that time out. I'm sure it's going to give you some edits that are not good, right? But it's going to give you some that are good too. And it's just, it's only getting better. And so if you really don't like editing your videos or adding captions to your videos, that can help. An AI program out there can help you do that. Okay, that's all That's all I had for today. I'm sure as this AI stuff continues to evolve and grow, I'll have another opinion on it next year and I'll keep sharing what I'm using. But if you need a walkthrough of exactly how I'm doing it, you can go into the Artist Academy and I can show you. I'm posting stuff in there all the time about how I'm using AI to make my work life more efficient and just sharing everything as I go, as I find out. <laughs> and so if you want more of not just an explanation of things, you want to see exactly how I'm doing it. Oh, in the Artist Academy, you can see exactly. Again, it saves you time. Just like I went to Gary and Gareth who have already figured it out to show me, I then turned around and showed everybody in the Artist Academy how to do it too, because it saves time. And it just, that way, you know, having people in the Artist Academy, we have a chat in Discord for Midjourney. So I get in Midjourney and I ask it to create a prompt. And Gareth is in there who knows way more about it than I do. He will sometimes see what I'm doing and he will add a different code or different wording to it and say, hey, I think you're meaning to do this. And he would add something and be like, oh, thank you so much. And so we're all working together. And so if you're in the Artist Academy and you want to be added to the Discord, just post in there and just in case you haven't seen the link to it and we, we will add you and Gareth and I can help you create reference photos and mock-ups in order to make our murals and paintings better in the end. Because So Gareth has been using this for a while and that's what really made me take notice. His recent paintings are a lot better than the previous ones. And he said, it's because I'm using AI to help generate the exact reference photos I want. You know, I was talking to an artist recently and she was painting and I was like, hey, where's your reference photo? She goes, oh, I'm not using one. I'm like, oh no, you have to in the beginning. I mean, and now when I'm not using a reference photo, it makes it more confusing. It makes it not turn out as well. Just You can't see the details. We can't memorize. We're not superhuman in that way. We need tools like reference photos and whatever is going to help us create better and make better paintings in the end, I think is worth looking into is what I wanted to say today. Okay, that's it. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And if you have any questions about AI, feel free to message me about it. And yeah, happy painting. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Artist Academy podcast. I've been putting out at least one episode per week for more than four years on this podcast. And it's really cool to see those download numbers go up and up as time goes on. And that's because artists like you listen and share these episodes. So really, 
when I say thank you, I mean it. <laughs> it's really cool to see progress along the way. And anyway, if you like this type of art and business content, then I highly encourage you to get the audio version of my book, Mural Money, with over 15 hours of listening inspiration. I'm currently running a special of just $17 for the audio version. You can go to muralmoney.com to find it. And that comes with a bunch of extras like my art supply list, my pricing guide, recommended book and podcast list, and so much more. I filled that book with tips from my art journey of building a profitable mural career. Plus, I've included the best of the best advice from guests I've interviewed on this podcast. It's the most affordable all-in-one book of advice on art and business that I have. And if you enjoy listening to me here, then I know you'll like the book too because I read it myself all 15 hours of it. <laughs> the book is available on Amazon and Audible normally for $25, but if you go to muralmoney.com, that is where you can grab the special $17 deal while it lasts. If you haven't listened to my book yet, this is your sign to do it. Again, normally $25, running a special for $17, but you have to go to muralmoney.com. That's where you can grab the audio version of it. And that's all I have for you today. So I will see you next week for another episode of the Artist Academy podcast. <laughs>